Uh, Josephine Hutton Mills is uh, ready, <laughs> ready to see what she can do about that. She's the excellence expert and lead consultant at Living with Finesse. Josephine, I can't tell you how glad we are that you're here because we've got a lot to learn. Okay. Gift giving, yeah. right? Okay, so maybe we'll start with some basic principles. Okay, maybe you can walk us through the reason why gift giving is even a thing why it's so important in relationships to give gifts. Okay. Um, let's go back. So I'm a, as an etiquette trainer, I'll start from the etiquette aspect of it. When we talk about etiquette, we're talking about doing things that will please the next person, that will be beneficial to relationships. Ultimately, the rules of engagement when we talk about etiquette has got to do with not offending people. Right. And we have we do have things like gift giving, floral arrangements, you know, gift wrapping. They all come under etiquette. Why? Because they go to please people. Now, why do we give gifts? Because we want to please the person who's receiving the gifts. So if I want to please you, then it has to be a gift that's meaningful and practical to you. It means that it's not a gift I want to give because I think this is the right gift to give you, but I know that it will benefit you it's something that you like it will make you happy now when we are giving gifts it's either in the context i must apologize for my straight voice today that's all right we can hear you quite clearly. yes um you might you will be giving gifts on a business level or on a personal level right on the business level there are ethics that surround it um, you have to be careful the level of the value of the gifts that you're giving out so that it doesn't seem as if you're bribing the person mm. or seeking any favor in the future. Um, on the And then also, it cannot be personal, personal things, things that are too personal because this is a formal relationship um, you have with whoever you are giving that business gift to. On a personal level, there are various aspects to it. You're giving your children. It has to be something that will teach them life's lessons as much as um, give them some fun. If it's a parent, an in-law, a friend, you have to determine who am I giving the gifts to and why am I giving the gift? And of course, is it beneficial to the person? Then you move away now to how you even present the gift. You know, sometimes you can get a very beautifully wrapped gift and the gift inside is not as um, exciting as the wrapping. Mm. But presentation is important because it, it means that you put effort into it. And people like to feel that you've spent time on them or you've put effort into making them happy. Mm. It even makes the gift <laughs> seem more worth um, while than it truly is mm. so there are various aspects when it comes to gifts how do you send gifts out how do you receive gifts how do you say thank you for the gifts that you receive mm. i know that we are well from the polls it looks like we are not a we are not very much interested in time but you can also give cards i don't know if people really like cards mm. in this part of the world but um mm. clearly mm. we like option. gifts yeah. So there are various aspects to gifts giving. We will talk about the time issue because I think it's very important. Yes, it is. We'll get into that a bit later. But while we're talking about gifts, I mean, is is it also a way of communicating? Let's talk about personal gifts for a bit. Um, yes, it is. As a, as opposed to business gifts. Yeah. Is it also a way of communicating? Can you use a gift to say something to your mother-in-law, your child, your friend? Is, 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 is Most it useful definitely. to do that too? Most definitely. Um, the first thing is that if somebody gave you a gift that resonates so much with you, what it says is the person has taken interest in you. Haven't you ever received a gift and you're like, oh, I didn't realize you knew I liked this thing. Mm. It means the person has listened. Sometimes we, we hardly listen to each other when we are speaking we are in relationships but we are not listening to each other because mm. if you listen to people you will know what you know makes them tick mm. and it is a way of communicating that i care about you i'm interested in you mm. i've taken notice of what makes you happy mm. so yes it is a form of communication yeah 
I used to date someone who lived in Cape Coast. And every time I'd go visit her, I would try and remember something that's broken in the house or like an iron or an extension yes. board or something. Something that's not typically a gift. Mm -hmm. Then I'd gift wrap it mm -hmm. and <laughs> take it to them. <laughs> it, it, it seemed to be a hit. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. That yeah, it's, it's about letting people know that you care about mm -hmm. them. Okay, so what's the formula? What's the strategy? You have someone in mind. You need to get them a gift. Is there some sort of decision tree, some sort of logic process that you would advise we go through in trying to decide what gift to give? Yes, I mean, you, you first of all have to know who am I giving the gift to? Like I said, if it's a business gift, is it the CEO of a company? Is it the receptionist? What level is the person at? Because most definitely if you're giving um, somebody of a higher authority, you would respect that office and give them something worth that office. And so you have to know who you're giving the gift to. Do they even appreciate the gifts? I said in the conversation that um, you could have somebody who is at a CEO level and you will think that giving the person a Mont Blanc pen is a good gift. Mm -hmm. But maybe the person does not really appreciate pens. You know, like you said, you, you get gifts of alcohol, but you don't drink. So people have just wasted money, but they've given you the gifts. So you know who you're giving the gift to. You try and find out what makes them tick, what makes them happy, what they don't like. And then also, you try to add a little finesse to it by making it look presentable. So you know, in our part of the world, one of the things we like the most is you're giving a set of options. So you say, in case you're going to, you know, give a gift to a CEO or a corporate person, these may be your likely list of options available to you. Yes. Are there any things you should be looking for? I mean, at, for instance, you've talked about the pen, that, that person may not like it. What other things can you, you know, think of giving that person as a gift? So let's look at the business side. Sure. So I'll start from maybe our executive level. It's good to give leatherware um, so you're from your wallets to maybe some table leatherware, some brassware, some stationery, beautiful stationery. Of course, people like their drinks here, but you've got to know what people drink. Mm -hmm. So if you go and give um, a gin or a vodka to somebody who is a whiskey drinker, then what happens? Again, you've missed, you've missed the, the target. So people like drinks. It's also good to give people vouchers vouchers for a good spa time a getaway actually yesterday something popped up and for any medical center that will start doing this i'll come for my commission <laughs> health is so important i don't think i've seen a health voucher mm. say that you put out a voucher and say that come and do a, a, a screening or for your next consultation health is important but we've never really thought about it as gifting somebody a health voucher uh, okay, I think I got yeah. one last year. Oh, really? That's yes. that's interesting. Really? Yeah, I got one I've last never, year. I've never, I've never heard of one, but from that's an, interesting from to an hear. Eye clinic. Very interesting. I said, come for you know, uh, there's you know, yeah. So okay, but that's true. Yes, I got one from a spa. That's health too, isn't that's, it? That's it is health too. Mm. You know, it's, it it goes towards your well being. Mm -hmm. Um, so still on the on the corporate gifts yeah. or the business gifts, um, we've spoken about the drinks. We've spoken about leatherware, um, stationery. Um, a good gift, a, a, a home gift, maybe a, a set of glassware, a decanter, brassware for your home. Even things like um, beautiful bath sets. It goes to your home. Mm. You know, so it, there's a very, very varied and wide range of things that you can give on a business level that don't get too personal. Mm. Yes. Should there be a minimum spend? In order for something to qualify as a gift, I think I think those um, those um, levels of ethics. Every company I know on the international stage, they're very very big on it. Um, in recent times, I know that our government has come out to draw the line on how we give out hampers, how um, government bodies give out and receive hampers because of the effect it has in the future. Um, I cannot give the figures here, but there are guidelines as mm. to the value placed on the sort of gift that you give to somebody. Of course, if you go giving a Rolex to a CEO when you you know that you'd be bidding for something, mm. it borders on, you know, uh, persuasion and bribery mm. sort of. Why yeah, if so. you give a, a car to a president? 
Yes, you know, so mm. so there are guidelines. I'm sure every company has, you know, ethics um, and guidelines for that. Although that's about maximum spend. I'm wondering whether there's a minimum spend. For example, if, if I uh, took, you know, a, a ream of paper out of the, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> printer, mm-hmm. wrapped it up and gave it to someone, I, you know, I, is there a minimum amount a person should spend in order for the thing you are giving to be, to qualify as a gift? Again, it goes to who you're giving the gift to. Mm. So if you're giving, you know who you're giving it to, that should be your your benchmark, your guide as to how you present the gift and what goes into into the gift. Mm. But otherwise, it's based on how much you can afford. Mm. Remember that when you're giving a gift, is is a lot more than the gift itself. It's the thought that goes behind it. Is the thought that I've thought about you and I appreciate you and I appreciate whatever relationship that we have. And so this is something towards that. It's more the thought. Let's talk about time. The gift of time. Uh, you made this point quite eloquently when we spoke earlier. Uh, you talked about how it's a gift you give of yourself yes. that you can never get back. Yes. How do you give the gift of your time to someone in a way that they will appreciate so let me go back to what we spoke about yesterday um, and I said that when you're born they don't just write 15th December they'll state the time at which you were born when you pass away it's not that day alone but the time at which you passed away and that emphasizes that you know <laughs> you have a shelf life there's a there's a you have time mm. And every minute that leaves, every minute you sacrifice for someone is very important. It doesn't come back. Um, And when you choose to give that time to A or B, you've chosen who you are giving that time to. (coughs) It won't come back. And I think we need to start appreciating that time is a big sacrifice and a big gift. Hmm. You know. So, I mean... You're with your wife, you're with your friends. You see them all the time. You hang out all the time. So if it's that time of the year, what other time are you giving that person? You, you hang out all the time. There's a difference between time and quality time. There's a time, I mean, you're at home, you're, I mean, the rat race, you wake up, get the kids ready to school, this, that, that's all time. Yeah. But you're talking about quality time where you're bonding, you're creating memories you're spending good time with each other. That is also a gift. So that good time that you're spending, that bonding that you talk about, is it a kind of quality time where you must go to another place? Or, for, I mean, if uh, you're, uh, you know, you're with your spouse, for instance, uh, would it be quality time when you leave the home to another place? Or because we've been rat racing, you probably would stay at home and spend that quality time. And if my husband is listening, I'm sure he's he's laughing at this time because this is my biggest fight with him. <laughs> anyway, um, again, it goes back to who are you dealing with? Do you know what your makes partner? the person? No, I'm saying I'm I'm, an, I'm answering the question yeah. that do you know who you are dealing with? What does the person want? I use myself for example. Okay. I would like to go out. Okay. Because I'm I'm at home with you all the time. I would like to do something different. Um, creating memories is very important to me. So if you're my spouse, you will know that. And that is what we can, we will work towards um, spending time away from home, Mm. doing something different. Um, So if your partner prefers to stay at home and lounge uh, with you watching a movie, that's what you do. Mm. I suppose it goes back to something you said earlier, that when you are giving a gift, you're supposed to think of what that person would like, yes. not what you would like. Exactly. Right. So f- maybe the gift of it would be that you are doing something with your partner that you don't like to do, but she likes to do it. So by doing it with her, that's your gift to her, right? If a gift, if you don't sacrifice something, it's not a gift. Mm-hmm. So you are sacrificing the fact that it's not really my thing, but what is the objective of giving the gift? You want to make the person happy. Is you don't want to make yourself happy. Mm. You know, if you're giving a gift and so what does the Bible tell us? When you you give a gift and 
the motive is for yourself that's that's not that's not a proper gift mm -hmm. you're doing it for yourself okay uh, we have an important conversation to have uh, let's get back to it uh, josephine hutton mills is the excellent excellence expert and lead consultant at living with finesse and she's been teaching us everything she knows about giving gifts so before the break i said when we come back we'll talk about the etiquette of it you know when to give the gift uh, and you know around christmas there's a bit of a debate you know do you give your gifts uh before christmas like, you know christmas eve or christmas day or boxing day some people think it, it, boxing day is the day to give gifts so yeah that, tell us what what's the the correct way to do it well historically and traditionally you would give um, gifts 12 days between the 12 if you know the song on the 12th mm -hmm. day of christmas mm -hmm. so your first are 12 days um towards christmas is when right. you you distribute your gifts it's, it's a good period to do that mm -hmm. however um etiquette is not as rigid as people think it is there's the reality of life and um, life has changed things have changed we become a little bit more liberal in the world so you can give your christmas gifts any time up to christmas eve mm. again traditionally we do not open christmas um, gifts on christmas day you open it on boxing day oh really so for all those on social media who do unboxing mm -hmm. that's where the word boxing day comes from you unbox right. your gifts so you open up your gifts you see the kids gather around the christmas tree pick up their gifts families gather around the christmas tree and open the gifts on boxing day yeah how will that's i convince my son not to open his again that christmas doesn't morning. work that doesn't work hey. a lot because the kids are, are too eager yeah i don't remember ever waiting for boxing day as mm. a child mm. i mean mm. <laughs> very early in the morning we are there even before our parents wake up mm -hmm. and we want to open the gifts so that's the reality of life mm. so i'm just sharing what um the tradition mm -hmm. of boxing day is but mm. a lot of people open their gifts on christmas day mm. that's that's really what happens that's wonderful okay is it bad etiquette to re-gift something that you've received which you know you're never going to use but it's still brand new completely usable and you know someone who would love it no it isn't of obviously you will not let the person who gave you that gift know that you re-gifted it hmm. but in the spirit of um, kindness and sharing and knowing that other people need um, things that you have things that are in good condition hmm. that you have it's okay to share those gifts and and bring some joy and happiness to other people mm. so there's nothing wrong with that okay should what about the you know some people give gifts that have the price tag on them that's absolutely a no-no when you're giving somebody a gift you you're not trying to tell them how much you spent on them but what if that's the message you want to send to them please that, please look, do not i then care i care about you no, so much that no. i spent Ten thousand cities on no, your gifts. No, no, it, it, it's <laughs> it's just not done. You don't do that. You are not you are not um, giving the person the gifts to show off. You remember, you are giving the gifts to bring joy to the person and to tell the person I care about you. It's good enough that I gave you a gift. You know, the person can if the person wants to know, they can actually find out. Mm -hmm. The shops are there. You can check it. You can Google and say, Oh, what is this this person has given me? It will give you an idea. But it's not you don't let the person know that this is um mm. it's like when you wear the label on your of the suit on your sleeve. So Sorry, that's uh, another conversation but it's bad. Day, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You don't do that. Now, I know that these days, for most of the big shops, you can buy Christmas gifts and it will come with what they call a gift receipt. So it, it, it's proof of purchase, but it doesn't have the price on it. Yes. Because of what you explained, that is bad for refunds, form yes. to, you know, tell the recipient the price, the, yes. how much you spent. Yes. So you can get a gift receipt yes. that doesn't have the price on it. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes you receive a gift and the minute you un uh, unwrap it, you know this is not something you will ever use. Mm -hmm. This is not something you like. Is it bad etiquette to ask for the gift receipt so that you can possibly swap it for something you will like? 
it depends on the relationship you have with a person if you have a very close relationship the person is like a brother or sister you may broach that you, you and, and ask them say that actually this this shirt doesn't fit or it's not really my but again there are rules for have you ever heard the expression you don't lift, look a gift horse in, in the, the mouth. mouth yes so let me quickly explain it for those who've never heard it again it goes back into history where horses were given as gifts were exchanged and you know that um, the breed of a horse or the quality of a horse is judged by its mouth and its teeth so when I send you a horse and you look the gift horse the horse in the mouth it's like you're trying to judge what at all has this person given me it's bad manners so to some extent if you call the person and say can I have the gift you know receipts it's like looking the gift horse in the mouth mm. Okay, another thing, because, uh, you know, sometimes people say that uh, when someone gifts you something, he's worried you because then you're forced to also do same. Mm. Is it compulsory that once you receive a gift from somebody, you must also get that person a gift? No, it isn't. Mm. It isn't. It's not a transaction. We are not selling, exchanging goods for service mm. or whatever. So I have thought about you. I've given you a gift. If you feel obliged to do so, or if you want to do so, don't make it seem like I am returning um, the favor. No. What you could do is wait for, possibly wait for Easter, wait for, wait for the end of the year, wait for another period, and um, then gift the person mm. something. But don't be in a hurry. So because they gave me this, I, 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 I have to, you know. And it's not just about Christmas. We go to functions, you go to weddings, um... I haven't run an events company. I see a lot of brides who are in, who want to buy souvenirs and put it at the gift table so that when you give them a gift, they give you a gift in return. It's not done. It's not necessary. A nice thank you card um, goes a long way. In fact, I'll encourage people, wait when you open the gift, write you know a handwritten thank you thank you for this kettle that you bought me. Then the person knows that you actually received the gift and it's beneficial to you. So we can move a step forward uh, 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 from the blanket thank you cards and actually write, you know, a handwritten thank you card stating mm. the person's name and what they brought. Mm. You can do that for Christmas as well. Mm. Rather than seeking to give a gift in return for a gift. Mm. But what about if, if we were to follow your advice and not give a gift at that time, but wait till a later date, to give them a gift should you seek to give them a gift at that later date which is of equal or higher value no than what you received again remember that we are not giving gifts to judge each other it's not a competition i gave you a gift based on how much i was willing to spend you know it's a share of my pocket it doesn't mean that your pocket is the same as mine we may even have the an equal pocket but my share of expenditure is different. What I choose to sacrifice on you should not um, give you pressure to sacrifice the same equal or above. Gift giving is voluntary. It's something I want to do out of the goodness of my heart. And I should have the freedom to give you a decent gift. Mm. Josephine, we've got about 20 seconds to go. What's okay. the one thing you want people to take away from this conversation? The one thing is, gifts are beautiful, but let's not um, use it to give pressure on people to give us a gift this Christmas. Times are hard, and let's look for other ways we can um, gift gifts. And I think that time is a beautiful thing to give each other this Christmas. Enjoy the Christmas season with your family, your friends, your children, your parents because that time may never come again. So enjoy it. Josephine Hutton Mills is the excellence expert and lead consultant at Living With Finesse. We're so glad you made the time.